Okay. Hello and welcome. I'm Justin Cormack. I'm the CTO of Docker. Um, and I'm here today with Dan. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dan Luring. I manage the open source engineering team at Anchor. And we're going to talk to you about um, software bill of materials. And um, in particular, we're going to talk about the new feature we worked on together. We just shipped um, a few weeks ago called Docker S-Bomb. Um, which you can get in all the latest and shiniest versions of Docker for Mac and Windows. It's coming soon to Linux. Um, and um, so we're going to assume that you have absolutely no idea what we're talking about at this point, and we're going to actually explain it to you. <laughs> Excellent. So a, a SBOM is a software bill of materials, and this is basically a list of ingredients of software uh, that's packaged within a software artifact. And so uh, for Docker, that's extremely useful because we have these artifacts called Docker images, and uh, an SBOM is a way to express what software is actually installed inside that Docker image. Um, there's several reasons you might want to have it have an SBOM. There's uh, vulnerability scanning. You can actually have vulnerability scans that uh, take as input the SBOM, and you can figure out which of those installed packages are vulnerable in some way. Um, but there's all sorts of reasons why you'd also want it for transparency. So now that uh, supply chain security is becoming more and more important and in focus for folks. It's really important to understand what you're actually consuming uh, when you're receiving an, a, a, a Docker image or any kind of software artifact. It's really, can... I mean, yeah, it's, it's really like, I mean, you know, if you're allergic to peanuts, you you appreciate it when there's a list of ingredients on, on, some, on, on a, everything. And that's why there are lists of ingredients on things. Um, and, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't like to go into a situation where there wasn't a list of ingredients. And it's exactly the same kind of thing. If you don't want to run certain kinds of software because they've got serious bugs in or security vulnerabilities, you, it's much easier if you've got a list of the software that's in there so you can take a look and see if it's something that you really don't want to be consuming. Absolutely. And and it could be that it's peanuts or it could be that it has a license that you're not able to consume. Uh, it could be that, like, like Justin said, there's a version that you know is, is not something you want or it's made by a maintainer that you don't trust or you only want software packages that you do trust the maintainer of, um, all sorts of reasons why you you want to get this information when you make an informed decision. So we um, decided to put all this in Docker Desktop so that you could try all this um, much more conveniently. And so we're going to show, show what we built. So um, yeah, we're going to take this for a ride. So let's let's first just type Docker SBOM and we'll see the help. So we can see here, there's all sorts of options, but it, all of these options amount to doing one thing. And this is to create a software bill of materials for the image. So it takes one argument and that's the image. So I could, for example, uh, type Docker SBOM Alpine latest. This is going to analyze the Alpine latest image uh, that's in Docker desktop and figure out what's, what software is installed within that image. And so by default, we get this really nice summary view. And so now Docker is telling you, uh, we have these packages, you know, 10 or so, 13 or so. Um, and uh, for each package, what's its version? And also what is the type? So there's different kinds of software that you could imagine would be installed. There's, you know, Linux distro, uh, package managers like, like APK, um, but there might also have been some, you know, language ecosystems included as well, like Node.js or Python, et cetera. Um, and so this is pretty cool. Now, all of a sudden, without even needing to run uh, the image, I can figure out what's inside of it. Um, before this, you would have to sort of, um, uh, you know, maybe maybe run an ephemeral container and, and shell in and, and, and play around. But I used to do that all the time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, so one thing is, you know, I would try to figure out like, is curl in this image, or I'm going to have to like start setting up like package management once as soon as I get into the image, and and uh, just, so that just so that I can use curl or sudo or something. And so um, this is a really great way because you'll see right off the bat uh, what's installed or not. Um, here, for example, I can see that curl is not in the list. Um, and so, you know, what I could do, for example, is um, Docker S bomb a different image. Uh, let's see, uh, Node. We'll do Node Slim. Let's see. If, curls in there. And so what it's doing is it's uh, finding the image in the, in the Docker daemon, 
um, and then doing some really cool analysis on the image itself. It's aware of all the uh, layers of the image file system, and it finds evidence that the uh, that any given software is installed. So let's see here. Drum roll. So obviously, there's a lot more in the in the even in the Node Slim image. There's a lot more than there is in the Alpine image, and you can see there's a mixture of Debian packages and NPM packages in this because it's a Debian based image, but it's also got a whole bunch of uh, node packages as well. That's right. Um, looks like curl is not in, in slim, but I think we checked earlier and it actually is in the, the non slim variant of node. Um, so that's interesting. I, I had forgotten that. And you can see, yeah, so all sorts of packages. Um, I think another thing worth highlighting is that there's actually more information that Docker Respond can provide to you. Um, then is kind of led on here. So this is a summary view. Um, you can quickly get a sense of, of what's installed, but um, there's uh, other kinds of uh, options you have here. Um, one interesting one is this format option. And so you can see um, by default, you're gonna get a table view, which is what we saw, but uh, there's actually standard SBOM formats uh, such as CycloMDX and SPDX. And, um, We'll talk about those in a second, but but here the, the key takeaway is you actually have access to more information. Um, and uh, one one format that I like to use a lot is uh, Docker SBOM is using SIFT under the hood. Um, and so SIFT ha has a format that's not a standard, but it basically shows you the raw data that was captured as it did the SBOM analysis. And so I could run Docker SBOM. So that way you get absolutely all the information that's available right now. Absolutely. So yeah, format. Uh, I could actually save this to a file too. This this is useful sometimes. Um, run it, I'll run it through JQ if you want to run queries on it and things as well, which is always nice. Absolutely. So I run it through this this JQL uh, alias I've made, which is basically JQ intersected with less. So I can kind of see the JQ formatting and um, page around with less. So. Yeah, now you can see what what SIFT and, and thus Docker SBOM actually knows about the image that it analyzed. And you can see it's a lot more than was shown in the table view. So if this is if this is of interest to you, and like as Justin mentioned, maybe you need to figure out are peanuts in this thing, and, and should I not uh, uh, consume it for some reason? You can you have a lot of information that you can use as you're making that decision. And so you can see, uh, you know, the same information we saw in the in the table view plus a lot more. So we can see. Where the evidence it found that of that npm package being installed, for example, and this is the path um, within the image, and it even shows you the layer. If there could be multiple layers in your image, and so it pinpoints the layer that it detected this installation, and um, it can figure out license information, um, other kinds of ways to identify the package in various ecosystems, like for CPE or Perl's uh, package URLs. Um, other information that's specific to the ecosystem, uh, like it, you know, NPM has its own way to describe some of this metadata, like who's the author of the package, for example, is there a website I can go to to find out more? What's the Git repo? Um, and so this is just to, just to kind of show you that you, you have access to a lot of information if you need it. Um, and if you don't, that's great too. Or use JQ just to pick the little bits you'd like. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And so another thing, um, is, is it is worth noting that there are standard SBOM formats. And so the two big ones that are out there right now um, and that SIFT supports and so Docker SBOM supports are SPDX and CycloMDX. And um, it's important to, to appreciate, especially when, when, when you start using an SBOM in, in uh, automated workflows, that there's all sorts of tools that, that are starting to support SBOMs, both as producers of SBOMs, you know, generating SBOMs through analysis like, like Docker SBOM can, but also consuming SBOMs. And so when you get to that point, it's important to have some sort of agreed upon standard that that data interchange um, that, uh, so the consumer is, is expecting what the, what the producer is producing. And so um, there's more information available for both of those standards if you're interested. Can you unshare at this point so yes. I can just share this slide? Yeah. Okay, so, um, hold on. So we covered most of the next section, isn't in that? That's is there anything we didn't cover? Yeah, well, I wasn't sure how far to get into like 
S bomb based workflows. I feel like maybe I shouldn't go too far after all. I think all. I don't know. I thought that was reasonable as a that was quite uh, um. I think it's good to cover some of that. We could either do it here or later. Okay. Okay. So, um, so we shipped this prototype, and it's really um, exciting. We're really um, interested in getting our feedback from you. We've already got a whole lot of ideas about where we want to go from here. You know, this this is just a little starting point to get us down the journey. So, um, the first thing that we're really interested in is. Um, you know, you can generate um, S bombs here, but um, if you've got an image, um, often it would be useful if, like, the, the, you could carry around the S bomb with it, so you didn't have to keep regenerating it. And so, particularly, you could, um, you know, check it. Maybe, maybe there's some things that the, um, you know, that uh, the tooling needs tweaking with. You might want to modify it slightly. You might have uh, more information, for example, than the. Um, that is immediately available in the SPOM. Maybe you've got some things in the image that are not installed through a package manager and Sift can't pick them up or not. Um, so you want to add some things to the SBOM or something and include it with the image. But also just generally, like uh, on a large image, generating the SBOM every time you want to use it takes time. Um, and it's really useful also if there's, you know, there's a bunch of tooling that wants to make queries about S bombs and doesn't need to doesn't want to actually just generate an S bomb every time it does it, but just, you know, if your tool wants to check, are there, you know, is this is this version of um log4j in the image, we want to quickly check this as part of um, you know, a gating process. You don't want to actually like generate a new S bomb every time you want to do that necessarily. It's just it's easier if you can kind of have the S bomb there. So we're looking at ways of um storing Standard, standardization of ways of storing the SBOM actually in the OCI image registry alongside the image. Um, and then we'll, um, a, a Docker we're planning to ship SBOMs with all the official images that we, um, you know, that we guarantee are complete and um, that we've, we've, we've double checked and analyzed and we're happy with um, so that you always have SBOM information for official images. And then what we'll do is we'll actually get this tool to read s bombs off images if there is one already rather than run the generation process so you can um you know generate it store it with the image and then just read it back and it'll be really quick and it'll be it'll be with the image um so we're we're working on that on that process and how to standardize it there's been a few um little bits of prototype around that but there's you know we've, we'll be presenting that to oci for standardization um and we're looking at um you know with that workflow, we're looking at generating the images at build time um, so that we can then attach them so that it's always with the image after that. Um, build time is also the point where you've really got all the information you need. There's, um, you know, because you can see everything is happening in the build process. You can see if there's other bits that are coming that maybe not picked up because they're coming from, um, you know, you're curling something into your image. I hope not, but, you know, <laughs> often it happens that there's there's other things that are picked up. There's um, potentially the versions of your own application that might not be visible in the S bomb, for example, because it's coming through Git, and you you want to add in the Git information from your application. Um, there's also things like sometimes um, sometimes it's useful to know things like which version of the compiler built your software, because sometimes although that's not in the in the output image, if there's a bug or an issue in the compiler it's kind of rare but it does happen there might be a security issue in the compiler um or you just want to know like um if it's been you know it's been built with an old version of the compiler that doesn't have um a performance um fix or something like that or um that's all sorts of you know things like that so sometimes it's useful to know more information that isn't actually visible in the image so doing things at build time lets you potentially collect more information um, and then you can just attach it to the image as we said and just read it off the image so you don't have to keep parsing it later on and you can sign the s bombs so that you know you've got a signed s bomb that you can trust um so you don't have to have to you know you you say oh well docker's provided me the s bomb for the official image i can trust that everything in it is accurate so i can just use that s bomb without double checking and regenerating it every time yeah, I'm really excited for the the integration with BuildKit and, and with the build process because there's all sorts of um, 
I think reasonable scenarios that developers have as they're producing their container images where there is information lost in the build process. It's very natural to happen in reality. And so one example we uh, look at all the time is if you're doing some sort of like NPM bundling where you have a bunch of, uh, in the build stage, you have access to all sorts of rich information about the software that you have. You have a bunch of package.json files from all of your dependencies and transitive dependencies, and that's great. And then what you end up in the final stage is a one line JavaScript file that probably three million characters long um, where all of that metadata has definitely been stripped out. And, and as you know, there's probably very little uh, uh, waste at that point, um, anything that's not absolutely needed for the execution itself. And so that's a great example where, where we see it really being beneficial to, to look at multiple stages at once and come to a decision about what the best representation of that is. And so um, having access to earlier build stages uh, gives you that transparency because now you can say, well, uh, the information was available and we happen to know that there is uh, the same software being uh, shipped into this final layer. But if we only looked at the final layer, we wouldn't have access to information that might be really useful uh, that describes the software, describes the version that the software's in, where it came from, if it was trusted. Um, and if you if you kind of merge that information with the upstream information in an earlier stage, uh, all of a sudden you can recover that lost information and provide uh, your image consumers with better information. So, you know, overall, we're we're really excited about this. This is a um, you know, this is an open collaboration. We're really wanting everyone to come and contribute and help and work out and give feedback about your requirements and. Um, you know, so we were just giving, we're giving you a starting point really to get this feedback and to start iterating on, on this. So um, we'd really welcome your participation. We also, I think this is a really good opportunity like um, to actually just make container images much more transparent. It's really nice to be able to see what's in an image. It's been for a long time, they've been a very, you know, very black box kind of thing. It's like, I've got an image. I don't know anything about it. It's got some things in it. It says it runs Nginx, but what else has it got in it? Like, um, is it really, good to, you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of kind of um, black boxness about this thing. And I think that um, one of, you know, one of the things we're looking to do at Docker is really encourage, a, you know, more tooling around image transparency. And we're working on a bunch of things. And I think SBOMs are a really key part of this for us because they, like having that, really easy summary of what's in, you know, what's in the Alpine image or whatever you're using or Debian image or, um, you know, some really complicated application image you've generated yourself that's got, um, that's got lots and lots and lots of code in it. Like it's really useful to know, you know, which version was it. Um, and, you know, having that sort of high level summary in package form is much more understandable than like say file lists and things like that, which is you know, the, perhaps too much detail. Um, but having like having understanding of just what's in it, what's the, you know, what's the kind of licenses, who wrote it, which git commit it came from, all those kinds of things. So you can trace back more about what went in, helps you do all sorts of debugging. And if you've got it attached to every image you've got, then you can see how they change over time, you know, look at the different versions and see how often you're updating and which versions you updated to and um, and all sorts of queries like that. And then obviously, you know, your customers and users are often starting to ask for SBOMs now. We, I've, we've had more and more occasions, you know, at Docker where people are asking us, you know, what's, what's it, which open source software are you using in your services in Docker desktop and things like that. And it's like being able to have tooling that just to, helps you answer those questions and, um, in real time is incredibly useful. Absolutely, I think that's that's one of the interesting things about SBOMs. It's great as a proactive measure because there's often, uh, there can be times that come up where you do need to answer those questions. And it's usually that you have to answer them pretty quickly. And it could be because you have a, a customer that's interested in this information. And so now you don't have to look it up on the fly. You can have that information already available and, and nicely refined in advance. But there's also situations like what happened with Log4j where a bunch of, uh, companies needed to scramble to figure out where is log4j installed um, I'm on my software suite and having SBOMs as part of your process lets you answer that answer that immediately um, whereas otherwise it might have been a lot of digging in a lot of time late nights weekends trying to figure that out yeah log4j was an interesting case where um, you know uh, it, vulnerability scanners took a long time to give you that information because they had to be updated with the vulnerabilities and you then have to rescan but if you just all you wanted to know was 
was it that version in there or was it an earlier version that was too early to be updated or have I has someone fixed this one already and it's already updated and just that version was all you actually really wanted to know at that point and then it, it kept changing a little bit there were multiple fixed versions that you might want to you know know about as well so there was a little bit of um change there but it was really very much a process about I really need to know at scale exactly which versions I'm running all across my infrastructure. And so that's an ideal kind of question that SBOMS would just make it really quick to understand. Um, so if you'd like to um, give us feedback, um, please do. We, we, this, you know, this really is a, a chance to, you know, affect how how this works in future. This is not set in stone, which we're, we're still iterating. There's lots of work to do. We're really excited to um, work together and with all of you and with many other people in the community on this. This is a big problem. That, uh, there's a lot of community work on at the moment. So um, please, please, please um, file issues um, here. Also, also on the um, talk a public roadmap if you like as well if you've got more ideas i'll come to the meetings um so um it's CIF, this tool is based on sift so if you're interested in how that bit's working come to the sift community meetings if you've got issues or um recommendations and things we've got the um github issues there and if you're interested in the build kit integration how that's working we've got a, a kind of roadmap -y issue in build kit and they'll be more linked off there as well um, but please, please, please tell us if it's useful, if it's not useful, if you need something else or, or whatever it might be. Um, thanks so much for listening to us. It's been really nice talking to you. It's been great working together with Dan and his team. And, um, and we're looking forward to working with all the rest of you and uh, shipping all this exciting functionality. Absolutely. Thank you.